Hi everyone, my name is Miss Ho and I am a physics teacher. In this video, we are going to take a video of an object free falling, that means falling with gravitational acceleration, and we are going to use a tracker software to create a motion graph based on that motion video. Here are the apparatus and materials you will need for your free fall video. You will need a measuring tape. If you don't have a measuring tape, you can use a meter rule or something that enables you to measure the height at which you're going to drop the object. You would also need an object which you can drop and it's able to hit the ground without being damaged. In my case, I have a ball that bounces. And by the way, isn't this so cute? So anyway, I have a bouncy ball, so it's not going to get damaged when it hits the ground. If you don't have such an object, then make sure that the ground has something that's able to absorb the impact to prevent the object from being spoiled. So if you don't have an object you can drop, then make sure you have a carpet or a rug or something that you can drop the object onto. So in my case, I don't need a mat. P is for physics, by the way. So in my case, I don't actually need this mat because my ball will not get damaged when it hits the ground. So for example, you can drop your eraser, you know, it'll hit the ground without being damaged. Also, just get a pencil so that you can mark the one meter height. So I'm using this area as the background of my video because it has the least clutter in my house and we want to make it easier for us to be able to observe the object that's falling down, right? So that's why I keep the background as clean as possible. First thing we're going to do is we're going to measure out a one meter height. This is going to be important for the tractor software. Okay, so the purpose of this pencil is so that I can make a marking here so I can see where I should drop the object later. Taking this video is very simple. You can probably do this in just one take. So get the object up to that one meter height and what we're going to do is we're going to drop it. What I will do now is I will show you how to use the tracker software to chart the motion of the object based on the video that we have taken. So open your tracker software and open the video that you have taken. So in my case, I'm going to open this video, which contains the motion of the object that's free falling. Now, if your video is quite short, it will load quite quickly. In my case, this video is quite long because I took this video for the purposes of making this video. So this is quite a long raw video. So it's gonna take some time to load. If your video takes just as long to load, you know, you can't do anything except wait it out. So just wait. All right, the video has finally loaded. So like I said, this is quite a long video, so we don't have to watch the whole thing. You know, you can actually watch your video by pressing play, but uh, let's not watch this raw video. You don't want to see the whole thing, right? So let's just focus straight uh, to the motion of the object. So, oh, that's roughly around here. Okay. Right, so it's about 3472. I'm just going to press play, and we're going to take note of the frame number where the object starts to fall. So when it's playing, you can see that, okay, it's starting to move. So I'm just going to go back. So this is the point in the video where the object was released. So that's three, five, three, six. Now you can drag this black triangle to match this point, but I'm going to key in over here, click on clip settings, and we're going to start at three, five, three, six. Now we also need to indicate the end frame. So I'm going to hit play. Okay, it's not playing. All right, we're going to hit play and we're going to take note of the frame number when the object has landed. I think I overshot that. So I'm just going to go back. So by clicking on this black arrow, this jumps to the beginning of this point. Now the purposes of these two black triangles are to indicate the start and end point within the video where we want to track the motion. So let's try that again. So I'm going to press play. And that's roughly about 3552. We can go backward and forward in these videos using these purple arrows, which takes us step by step. So that's, whoops, 
it's really bounced. Yep. Roughly about three, five, four, nine. So I'm just gonna take one, whoops, one a hit. That's a three, five, five, zero because the previous frame that counted as part of the motion. So that's three, five, five, zero. I'm going to key that into the end frame here. Three, five, five, zero. So the reason why we want to set this is because we want to focus only on the motion of the object and not the rest of the video. Right, so next, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set the length that we have measured out. So if you remember in my video, I measured out a one meter height for the drop of the object. Let's go back to the beginning of that motion. And this point to the floor is one meter. So I'm going to use a calibration stick. Go to this icon, which has number 10 here. Click on the drop down arrow, new calibration stick. Okay, it does say here, shift click to mark for the first end. So press your shift button and you can see how your cursor has changed into a square cursor. Move your mouse to the starting point of the uh, movement. In my case, it's over here. And you can see how a blue square with crosshairs are now indicated as the starting position. Now you can release your shift hold. You don't have to keep holding it down. And we are now going to go all the way to the bottom and where it landed, which was roughly actually around here, this is the end point of the length that uh, the object has dropped to. A number automatically appears here, 932.7 meters. Now, obviously, it's not that length, so we're going to change it to 1 meter. Press enter and you'll find the length has been keyed in. Now you find that the line is not exactly vertical and you'd like to make the axis quite correct. You can click on this purple icon and this appears. This is to allow you to set the Y and X axis. So if you find that, okay, the way that the object has dropped doesn't exactly follow the Y axis, maybe because the video was not set completely level, you can actually rotate this. So I'm going to bring this crosshair down here and you can rotate it. Now you can't actually rotate this line, but you can rotate the X axis. So you can see how this icon changes into a hand. So click on this and as you rotate, you find that both the X and Y axis rotate at the same time. So you can rotate this until you get the Y axis to be in line with the calibration stick. And this has been set. So if you want to hide the purple axis, you can click again, but that doesn't mean it's disappeared. It's still there, it's just that it's now hidden from view. Next, what we want to do is we want to track the motion of the object that's falling down. You must remember that this software doesn't automatically look for objects that are moving and it doesn't track the motion of those objects automatically. We need to tell the software how the object is moving and it will create the graph for us. So what we need to do now is we need to tell the software how the object is moving. So I'm going to go back to the beginning of the motion. Uh, you can see the ball is back in my hand. And if we want to hide the calibration stick, you just need to click on the blue icon and that has uh, been hidden from you. It doesn't mean it's gone like the purple axis. It's actually still there. It's just that it's hidden from view. So to track the motion of the object, click on create, point mass, and you'll find a, a new toolbar has appeared here with mass A. Now they do indicate here that a mass of uh, A is one kilogram. Obviously, my smiley face ball is not one kilogram, but we don't really need to key in the mass because we are not tracking the mass values uh, in this case. We're not counting the momentum or the energy. What we want to do is just want to check how the object is moving. That means we want to observe the displacement, velocity, and acceleration, which means that the mass is not that important. So you don't have to key in the values you can ignore. We can leave it as one kilogram as it is. If you want to key in the actual mass value, by all means, go ahead, but I'm not going to because it's not necessary, right? Okay, so what we're going to do now is we need to tell the software how the object is moving. So you can see here it says shift click to mark. So again, this time, hold the shift button down. You can see the cursor has become a square again. And this time we're going to click on the object. So I'm going to click on the middle of the smiley face ball. And you can see something red has appeared here. So this is to tell the software that this is the object's starting position. Now it's not so obvious here, but the frame has actually moved forward by one. 
So if I press shift and click again on the ball, okay, now can you see that the ball has moved even further down? So what happens when we click like so, it tells the software where the object is, and at the same time, it moves to the next frame so that it's easier for us to keep marking the position of the object in every frame. Now, as I'm clicking, can you see how a graph is appearing on this side? So the graph is being created automatically as we are tracking the motion of the object. So now it's a lot more obvious, right? You can see how the object has moved and its uh, displacement is actually getting larger and larger and larger right to the bottom. Now it's bounced up, so I'm not going to take that bounce because we just want to observe the motion of this object in a single direction downwards. If you like, you can actually track the bounce as well, but uh, this video, I'm going to focus only on the free falling motion. Now let's take a look at the graphs that have been uh, generated. So if we take a look at this graph, you can see that, okay, the shape looks really weird. It's actually not what I was expecting at all. But I think this is because this is showing us the X component, which means that it's showing us how the object is moving relative to the X axis. If you want to take a look at other options for the graph, you can click on this X meter. Let me just show you one more time. Click on this X meter, and you have a lot of options that you can take a look. So let's take a look at Y, because this object is falling down parallel to the Y axis, correct? And there you go. So you find that this graph is so much smoother. In fact, this is the correct graph that shows how the displacement is changing with time and is moving downwards because you know it is getting closer to the floor. This is the correct graph that we want to see for displacement time. If you want to take a look at the velocity time graph, click on this and you can select say velocity, which shows us velocity is increasing with time, which is correct although it should be increasing at a constant rate because acceleration is constant. Let's take a look at uh, velocity y and velocity x, which uh, velocity x is even weirder, so let's not take that. Let's look at acceleration. Now, the acceleration looks really unusual for all three, which is really strange because the acceleration should have been constant because this object is free-falling. So my suspicion is that Maybe my video doesn't have enough frames per second. So because it doesn't have enough frames, the video is not sensitive enough to show the different um, motions in every frame. And that's why the measurements are probably not as correct as we would like it to be. So you know what? Let's just go with it because this is the motion graph that has been generated. So if you'd like to keep a copy of the graphs that have been generated, uh, let's go to this first. All you need to do is place your mouse cursor within the region of the graph, right click and select snapshot. And you'll get a copy of the graph that's generated. So let's take a snapshot of the displacement time, which is this one, as well as the velocity time, which looks really good for this one. So let's take the best looking one, right? The most correct looking one. So right click and snapshot. Um, in the case of acceleration, we don't actually have a correct one. So let's just, let's just go with it. So we're just going to right click and snapshot. And there we go. So we have our three graphs generated based on our object that is free falling. Here we go. And this is how we use a tracker software to chart the motion of an object based on a video that we have taken. A shout out to the developers of the Tracker software. Thank you guys so much for creating this amazing software, which is free for everyone to use. That's going to make it so much better and easier for physics students to study motion. So now that you know how to use a Tracker software, you can make many more motion videos of your own and use the software to create a motion graph for those corresponding motions. For example, you can use the tracker software to check the motions or videos of a basketball bouncing, of an object falling off the edge of a table, or even a video of you throwing an object up and catching it. You can also use the tracker software to create a motion graph of an object sliding down a ramp. Do check out my video that goes through how we're going to create that video as well as how to use the tracker software. 
Don't forget to click like and hit subscribe to my YouTube channel, Physics Rocks. Thanks for watching and have fun!